Hello, everyone, and welcome to our Imaging USA live series. Today, we're chatting with PPA president, Kira Derryberry. She is a studio owner and a portrait photographer based out of Tallahassee, Florida. And when she's not busy serving on PPA's board of directors, she's belting out a karaoke song or recording a podcast or spending time with her family. Uh, thank you so much, Kira, for um, being on the show with us today. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Yeah. And happy um, MLK Day as well. Happy MLK Day. No, you don't day. get that day off. <laughs> I don't. Everybody else did. Lucy's home. <laughs> Kevin's home. My mom is home. Good. <laughs> bank, good. Bank holiday, but it's a great day. And I'm uh, actually, we just missed the parade outside my studio window. So. Oh my gosh. I know. It comes right through here. I was actually, I was like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get into the office, but made it. Prime location. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Well, um, for everybody that's tuning in right now, uh, thank you for being here. Um, also, you can drop in your questions during the live stream. We'll answer those as they come along. And yeah, we love to hear from you. So don't be shy. <laughs> um, and based on kind of where we were at last time when we were chatting, um, making the most out of this photography conference, um, what, what are some of the ways you can best customize your experience to meet your needs. Um, and obviously we have a range of people, amateurs and people that have been here many, many times. So what's your best advice for people to customize their experience? Oh man. So it's, it's interesting because I remember my first imaging and it doesn't, it really doesn't feel like it was that long ago. My first imaging was um, in Arizona a number of years ago. And I think it was the last time oh. I went, which is crazy because I've, PPA president now. <laughs> How many years so, ago was that? <laughs> I, like 11 years ago? Or yeah. I don't know. It, because, uh, or maybe maybe 12. I can't remember exactly. But um, but I had some friends that convinced me to go. And I went and I roomed with two people I had not met before. And I had a full newbie experience. Um, I was lucky because I had some people locally to hang out with um, to kind of show me the ropes and show me around. But I had the time of my life. Like, it was it was great. And it was so much information, though, that I don't know if I came home just having had a really great time meeting a lot of new people it, with a lot of actionable things, because I think I was I think I didn't know what to expect. So maybe that's a good place to start is like if you haven't been. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> so if you haven't been, um, I would especially if you're new, because just because you haven't been doesn't mean that you're new to the industry. You know, we've got a lot of people that have been in the industry a while and they just haven't made it over to Imaging USA. So my advice would be to start to really assess where you were last year. Mm -hmm. And if that means you weren't in business, that's okay. You know, start thinking about the things that you need to get going. And it's, if you're if you're starting your business, that's going to be a little overwhelming. So start thinking about things like if it's gear, if it's like, okay, I have a camera, but um, you know, I'm just shooting natural light, which is nothing wrong with that. But if it's like, maybe I need to get a little better on my technique to feel like more of a professional, maybe I need to go take some classes on lighting. You know, um, if it's more like, okay, I've got my lighting down, but I just don't know anything about having a business, which is kind of where mm -hmm. I was. I wouldn't, I, I, I probably thought I had my lighting down, Elena. <laughs> like, yeah. I didn't know what I didn't know, you know, but, um, but, you know, business was certainly something my first year that I could have and should have leaned into more. Um, mm -hmm. The business stuff like doesn't sound as sexy as the like technique and the gear and the in the shopping the art, and, yeah, yeah, and the art and um, yeah. But the business stuff, if you're getting into business, getting a strong foundation is going to be key. So mm -hmm. I would take you down a business track um, down at Imaging mm -hmm. USA and try and be a little narrowly focused. I think on on getting the most out of the, these these one or two pain points that you can identify for yourself. Um, if you've been in business for a while, um, like me, I have, I do a great job of creating ways that I can assess my year and then not looking at them. So yes, <laughs> yes we, ch we chatted about that. How do you, how do you carve out some time? How do you work to kind of carve out a stress-free zone for you to assess how your business performed, um, in the previous year? Is that possible? <laughs> Um, it's possible. Do I do it perfect? No. And so but the first thing to remember is it's however you get it done is how you get it done. If it's, uh -huh. if you 
earmarked a certain number of days to be doing this and that doesn't go your way, it's okay, you still have time. Uh, what I did this past year was I closed the studio about midway through the month. I think December 15th had been my last meeting day. Um, and then I had the next three weeks to take off, to reset, to relax, to hang out with my friends and my family, um, and to kind of come ease back into work with going back and looking at those numbers. Uh -huh. You know, going back and not just the numbers of like, how many shoots did we do? Um, how much money did we make? But what did we sell the most of? What areas uh -huh. did we lack as far as like what we offer? Um, you know, for example, I noticed this year my album sales were down compared uh -huh. to last year. And so I started to kind of go, go dig through and find out, was I not pushing albums or did I not have clients that that's not, that's not where they ended up going. And is that on me? Is that the client? You know, that kind of thing. So, I mean, uh -huh. I know now that when I come to imaging, I have a kind of clearer idea of where the holes were and what uh -huh. to look for to kind of fill those as I come into the trade show and classes and that sort of thing. Now that, that will be me living vicariously through all of you guys, because I'm uh -huh. going to be, you know, busy <laughs> at all the events, but taking photos. Year. <laughs> being in pictures. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And I mean, identifying, this is something we had chatted about um, in a previous call, I think last year sometime was you, you have had help from mentors who have really kind of drawn you towards this more client uh, centric philosophy for your business, mm -hmm. which is mm -hmm. identifying those pain points. And then your business is the solution for your client. Um, and then you kind of flip the script. You're like, have, what, and what, what was, what was your advice for people with imaging to kind of flip that, to flip that idea flip that back onto yourself? Yeah. So if you, yeah, you've, uh, yeah on, on our podcast, I'll get your shoot together, uh, with, uh, my podcast partner, Mary Fist Taylor, who's also a past president of PBA. Mary mm -hmm. is a story brand expert. So, and I'm not saying she's story brand certified. So she's the one that taught me a lot of this as well as my business mentor, Gregory Daniels. So I have mm -hmm. them to take the sage advice and pass it on to you guys. So they help me identify my client by really identifying where it is my clients were uh, or what my clients needed. You know, even if the client didn't understand what it was <laughs> yet. So uh -huh. once I identified that, now what I have to do and what I would recommend is when you come to imaging is I have to kind of go, okay, what are my pain points that are holding me back from giving that solution to the client? Okay. So mm -hmm. if it's that, if it's a product, you know what I mean? Like if I go, okay, my, my clients, I want to sell wall art. Okay. But what I've noticed in the last year is maybe this is a hypothetical, but maybe uh -huh. my clients are sort of getting confused and giving up and just saying, okay, I just want digital files, you know? And so maybe it's become harder for me to push that wall art. What if I narrowed it down? What if I wasn't offering them as many items? And what if I honed in on very special products that I could be giving them. And so that would be what I would be. And I've actually done this a few years ago at the trade show is actually going to these vendors and narrowing down the types of products that I want to give that is exclusively something that they can get from me, right. With, mm -hmm. with my art on it and, and not overwhelming the client, you know what I mean? So yeah. sometimes offering so much to the client kind of makes them back away, you know, <laughs> much, too and, much choice. Yeah. Too much choice, too much choice. Yeah. And then, um, but if it's more like, okay, so I want to be, um, I want to be able to provide, and, and I'm going to keep using myself as examples, right? But if I want to be the best and most efficient headshot photographer I can be for my clients so that I can turn the images around quickly so that I can do, uh, serve a higher volume during the week, then I need mm -hmm. to go in with that pain point in mind, okay, how am I going to achieve this on the technical side? How am I going to achieve this on the business and marketing side? So those would be the directions I would be focusing on when I come. So it is still about the client, but now it's about where's the tools that I need to be able to create this for the client. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. And I would, I would say too, that our, um, the way our website's designed and how you can search through the, throughout the schedule, what is available you can really get specific on what day you're going to be there and mm -hmm. what topic you're looking for. So you can fill in your schedule with things that are going to work and really help you to, yeah, like fill in, fill in those like missing skills and um, it's just the things you like to work on uh, areas of growth. Um, and I mean, this, this is kind of that, 
that kind of month, which is, you know, January, we're doing a lot of self-reflection mm-hmm. about how we can grow. Um, I guess, I mean, you already kind of covered some of those tips on how you would, um, what you would suggest for other photographers to do. Is there anything else kind of related to imaging that you could offer your advice on since you've been many times? I know you are, one thing I was going to say, you are a juror this year, if I'm correct. Yeah. I can see. Could you tell us a little bit more about that for the people that aren't familiar with um, IPC? Well, it, you know, I think a lot of people may have been familiar with what it's been up until this point. You know, the International Photographic um, Competition has come become uh, a full competition. So it's come full circle. So this year, it's going to be super exciting. I expect it to have a big audience, a lot of hype. I, I don't know what to expect as a judge, because this is the first time any of us have done that. Um, so I am excited to, um, to be on the stage and to be doing a live judging in front of everyone to make it um, as it as fun as we can. Um, so if you're going to be at imaging on Saturday morning, it's going to be judging all day on Saturday, but on Saturday morning, that's the, the time slot that I'll be there alongside some of my colleagues. And so make sure you come and sit in. Uh, we'd love to have you and come see what it's all about. I, I, I think that looking at other people's work, especially high level work has always made me push myself to want to be a better photographer and has always kind of made me go, okay, I need to really buckle down and study. I need to, I can't just get this overnight. I got to actually do some homework. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, truly. Um, I am seeing some great questions. Um, one person's asking, is there a product from the trade show that surprised you um, that you started offering in your business? Hmm. A product that surprised me. Um, you know, you know what I, what I started doing is I, it's, I used to not really understand um, the differences in papers, right? So um, because there's so many types of print, you know, prints on different types of media that you can offer. And so I wanted to offer a product that was really high end and also a product that was not readily available to the general public. I think for me, uh, a level of um, exclusivity when it comes to the product line is a must, right? Because we don't want them to be able to like upload to Walgreens and get this print, (laughs) you know? So, so I started really paying attention and so surprise isn't the, isn't the right word, but I started really paying attention to the finishes on paper types for, especially for, for framed printing. Uh Um, and, uh, uh, and, and chose, you know, the paper type that I thought was going to work best for the type of work that I do, which is primarily studio work. Um, so pay attention to that because that kind of makes a difference. The other thing when it came to that was, um, I used to think that it was, uh, the client was just going to want it behind glass. You know what I mean? Like I thought they were just going to want, but when you put it behind glass or acrylic, sometimes you can't, what is the point in having the fancy paper? (laughs) Like if if you can't see the finish, because now you've just put a, a, a window into it, you know? So that was something that was really nice to see in person. So I, I went through and took a lot of photos of products. Most of the, the vendors are going to have, you know, the label of what kind of product it is right there on the wall. So go look at all those displays at your favorite lab. I use White House Custom Color, but all Mm -hmm. of our labs are going to be there and it's going to be, it go and go and just take it all in, take notes, take pictures. That's a great, that's a great piece of advice. I I, I didn't even think of that myself. I, I guess I tend to see things behind glass. Um, what what are some yeah. like, I guess what are some of the other offerings? Do you do canvas prints ever, or is that so? Not I have three because remember I try to narrow it down. You know, so yeah. I have fine art frame prints uh, that I offer. I have um, um, the metal. I, I offer the high. I call them high impact metal. So I've kind of named that product. Um, uh, and then I have um, the float canvas. So I offer a lot of float frames around canvas in my studio and I'm, I'm starting to transition that canvas into a a different kind of canvas. And so that's kind of like a, that's something I'm working on for 2024 is kind of transitioning a product line out and a new product line in to replace it. So. Mm. And I have, there's another question at the very top of our chat Um, tips for first. I mean, we we are going over tips for first time attendees, but should I bring an empty suitcase? Do do you tend to stock up when when you're at the (laughs) expo or are you light shopper? 
Oh man. Well, a lot of stuff will get shipped to you. Like a lot of the vendors yeah. have the ability to, to ship things to you. You'll order it. They'll, they'll send it to you. Um, but you know, sometimes you hit that trade show on the last day and some of those floor models are for sale. Um, it's not every time I couldn't mm -hmm. promise you who's going to do that, but there's been a time or two where I uh, folded up a, a cloth background and stuck it in my suitcase and went over the weight limit on the way home. So, you know, if you, if yeah. you have a lot of shopping to do, it probably wouldn't be a bad idea. And the worst case scenario is, is, uh, yeah, come home with a, a an extra suitcase. Yeah. And I guess an, another question that I would have um, as someone who I, I feel like mentorship is so important um, for a lot of people uh, mm -hmm. at various, various um, places along their journey. Any tips for networking, getting out there, chatting with people, potentially finding a mentor? I don't know if that's something you're familiar with, but I feel like yeah. you'd be a good person to ask. Yeah. Well, okay. So I, uh, I met, you know, a lot of my mentors by, by um, participating in my local community events. So um, we have a community network partner in Florida, Florida professional photographers. That of course is where I met um, several of my dear, dear friends um, and uh, colleagues and mentors. Um, but at Imaging USA, if you're a new member and you're arriving, you don't, don't miss out on the new member meet and greet. Okay. So that is a yep. great opportunity You can play a lot of games, like little icebreaker games and get to know you stuff. Uh, the board of directors will be there. So you'll get to be introduced to a lot of us. Um, if you meet one of us and you're like, Hey, I'm looking for somewhere local in my state. I'm sure we can help you find, um, those, those groups. The parties are a great place to meet people. I don't know. I'm, um, I'm not known for being a wallflower at parties. <laughs> so much yeah. to everybody on Instagram. Um, but uh, get out there, get on the dance floor, make some friends, yeah. you know, um, but uh, also in your classes, like outside of the classes, if you meet uh, an educator who um, really spoke to you, usually you have the opportunity to say hi to them at the end as well. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, just take every opportunity to reach out to somebody and let them know that they, what they've said has meant something to you. And uh, you never know, you'll form some great connections. Yeah. Yeah. And it was really sweet. I think Diana Robles was talking about how she had met John Gress um, at a show, and she, but she was a little too afraid to say hi. And her husband uh, encouraged her to. So I think, yeah, just, just everybody. Um, I feel like everybody at Imaging are, they're very humble, um, easy to approach. Don't be afraid mm -hmm. to say hi to instructors. They're like very kind. Um, don't be, to be, don't be afraid to fangirl. But, yeah. I think they like <laughs> that. Yeah, I mean, well, <laughs> whenever, don't be, I'm, I have fangirled many times, like, you know what I mean? Where I just went, hi, my name is Karen. And I think you're amazing. <laughs> no, no shame. Oh, we no all shame. Do it. We all I've do done it. it. I've done it so many times and then I've had it done to me and, and having it uh, being on the other side of that is, uh, is humbling, but also it's like, you just, I just want to, I just want to squeeze those people. I'm like, ah, you're like me. I'm a dork too. <laughs> I want to meet people. <laughs> yes. So, yes. Yeah. No, really, we, it's fine. I think net networking avenues is, is a great option. The parties are great. Um, have a I'm business networking avenue. Gosh. or, you know, yeah, yeah. And another one, this is kind of late for it, but like, what's the best way to find people to room with? Mm, well, there's, uh, let's see, there's the loop, which I know yes. we've got, which is kind of our forum, right? So mm -hmm. if you want to jump, you might be able to find people that are still looking for roommates. I know that yeah. hotel block is already booked up. Mm -hmm. um, you, again, if you're a part of your local uh, uh a community network. There's a lot of times there's people looking for roommates um, there. Uh, I was lucky. So my first year that I was going to Imaging USA, the people who invited me had already bunked up too many people in their room. So there wasn't room for me. So they are the ones that recommended the two women that I ended up uh, rooming with that year. Oh, nice. um, and so even though I didn't know them, that was how I got connected. So maybe if you do know other people or if you're jumping on um, one of our PPA Facebook groups that we have, you might be able to reach out to one, somebody you already know and say, Hey, I know you have a roommate, but do you have anyone that you know of that might be looking for some, someone to roommate with? Uh, you never know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like that. And I mean, I guess the, um, this general time of year, I think we're all, um, we're all looking for motivation. I, I really do think if you take time 
out of your conference experience to make time for some of those more fun classes. And Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of like inspiration to be found, whether it's like at the trade show or just chatting with other people. Um, It's a great way to fill, I feel like fill your cup, um, like your creative well, like we all, we all need to like put good stuff in so we can continue to do our work. Um, Mm -hmm. Do you like, do you ever have these like moments in your career or kind of throughout the year that you experience like a low, like low feelings of motivation or a little bit burned, burned out. (laughs) Is that, does that happen to you? (laughs) You know, it usually happens the longer it's been since I've been at a big event like this, you know what I mean? Uh Cause I, I am, I am a, I am an extrovert. Uh, I, it's, I am. And so I recharge by being around people. Um, Mm -hmm. so a lot of times when I start to feel like this has become a grind, I am just, you know, showing up every day and doing the job. And it's just kind of like, I need to go take a class. That is what Mm -hmm. I need to do. And this is something that I've, I've mentioned in, um, in one of my past articles for the magazine, but I need to go take a class. That's not something that I do all the time, you know? So, Mm -hmm. uh, actually you brought up Deanna. I took her class and she is maternity photographer. And I went to her class kind of just to be, cause she's my friend and I wanted to be supportive mm-hmm. and I wanted to, you know, I wanted to see her teach cause I hadn't done that yet. And my, I left uh, so inspired and kind of like, you know, scolding myself for being lazy. Like, you know, cause like you get into a, you get into a rut with the way you pose and the way you talk to clients and whatever. And I, I watched her sort of explain how she works with her maternity clients and how she gets them comfortable and gets them to do these very organic, real poses. And Mm -hmm. I was like, there's no reason I can't apply this or like there's, what do you, what have I been doing? (laughs) Yeah. You know, and, and her approach to lighting and to, to pull out very simple and creative set making or light making, I was just like, Mm -hmm. this doesn't have to be maternity. I could be doing this with family sessions. I could be doing this with branding sessions. I could be, I could be doing this for my own self portraits. Like, why aren't I, (laughs) you know? And so that is where I get re-motivated is going into something um, a little blind and Mm -hmm. kind of waiting for something unexpected to strike me. And that's kind of hard to plan. You know, that's something that happens a bit more organically, but I think- the best way to kind of get hit by lightning is to like put yourself out in the middle of the field. Does that make sense? I love that. I love that. That's, that's perfect. Yeah. You, you mentioned, I think that you mentioned that in a uh, article previously that it was like the playfulness and just the, just sheer creativity of uh, Diana that really inspired you to kind of try mm-hmm. some new stuff, like get in there, like come in there with this vigor that you needed. And, um, and that's just the most recent time that happened. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, uh, it's yeah. been it's been a long time because you know with being on the board you know where our our schedule is a little bit different than the regular attendee at Imaging USA so it's been a while since I've been able to like to go to a an all day class you know what I mean and so yeah. ours is the most recent but certainly not the only time that that's happened so I highly recommend doing something out of your comfort zone while you're there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Get out of your comfort zone like if if you don't do it for yourself no one's gonna make you do it. Um, <laughs> we need to do that for ourselves. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm, I guess I'm curious if, um, if you would say, um, I was thinking of a couple of the people that you mentioned on your podcast, there's John Gress, there are countless, um, Kevin Dooley. There's just so many great instructors that are going to be there this year. Um, basically if there's anything you are seeking, whether it's lighting technique, um, or, or just, or just going out of your comfort zone, like the classes there. Um, I'm, I'm kind of running out of questions. Is there anything else we could say <laughs> to encourage people? Um, oh, you know what? Let's just talk about the fun stuff. Okay. Because okay. there's, you need to okay. allow yourself a little bit of break, right? So it's going to be <laughs> long, early mornings, long yeah. days, a lot of time on your feet. Make sure you bring, uh, you bring layers. Cause it's hot and then it's cold and then it's hot and it's cold. And that's nothing. That's just a conference. Yes. That's just how that goes. Make sure you bring comfortable shoes. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're going to look really cute in the booties and you're going to, and you're going to see me, I'm going to be out there in the little booties. And yeah. then later you're going to see me and I'm going to be in my socks and my slides because yeah, my they're going to kill hurting. you. Yeah. So I understand wanting to look cute. I want to look cute too. 
Um, and I do as yeah. I say, not as I do. But you, you can wear the sneakers. Oh, I'll be in yeah. my sneakers. You wear the yeah. sneakers. Lastly, come prepared to dance at that Tuesday night party. Come prepared. And I'm not saying like, just like, oh, you're maybe going to go out and dance. I, you guys, this is the most fun. I, this is like, I look forward to this every single year. There's very few places that a 42 year old woman can dance her butt off without looking like an idiot. And I am so excited <laughs> to go on the dance floor. Our DJ is amazing. He's great. Um, plays. We love DJ, DJ Steve. DJ Steve plays. The, he's from my hometown. He lives in my hometown of Huntsville, Alabama. Oh, I did not know yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. He actually, oh, cool. he actually, I was a bridesmaid in a wedding that he DJ. <laughs> How odd. But, that is so random. But you guys don't, uh, <laughs> ladies, let me just leave some gas ladies. in the tank for Tuesday. <laughs> like, leave some gas in the tank because yeah. I know, I know you get together with your girlfriends. You want to go dance and we all feel a little stupid because there's there's nowhere in town to go dance. It's usually just like me and my friend Bethany, like looking stupid at, at the place, you know, or whatever. But like, this is a time to wear your sneakers, put on your athletic gear, <laughs> go out yes. and dance the night away. And it's so unlike, much fun. unlike the dance, the dancing in your, uh, in your city, the party starts at 9 PM, not 11. So uh, you go to yeah. bed at a reasonable time after you dance your feet. Off. <laughs> yeah. 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 You'll go, you'll, you'll go to bed at a reasonable time because you'll have an early, I'm sure you'll have an early out the next day, but I, I yes. highly recommend to, to make sure you have as much fun at yes. Imaging USA, just, just for your mental health as you do mm -hmm. for um, actually uh, going to the classes because it's, a, it can be mm -hmm. kind of a fire hose and you need to take a look, some breaks and have some good time. Yeah. And, and make those connections. Like if you, if you're a sticky note kind of person, like make sure to stick those somewhere, you're not going to lose them follow up with people, um, make your post show kind of follow ups too. I think it's a great, great time I've, to like nurture connections too. I think if you take a lot of notes, if you're a note taker, I think, uh, to folk, Mary and I have said this on the podcast, focus on one or two things that you're going mm -hmm. to actually do and be able to mark off a list when you leave and not this enormous list. You might've taken a lot yeah. of notes, but look back at those notes and decide what mm -hmm. of these take priority and what can I accomplish first? Before yep. you get overwhelmed and don't do any of them, you know, yep. little steps. It's all incrementalism. We're just building, mm -hmm. taking steps. Yeah. Well, this has been so lovely. Um, it's always a joy to chat with you. <laughs> thank you for, thank you for taking time to, to be here today. I really appreciate you. Absolutely. Yeah. It's a, it was a great yeah. day for it. I was excited to do it and thanks for having me. It's going to be great. And the, the days are just like flying by. Uh, I know. I'm getting, I'm getting my suitcase packed now and all my plans in I order and <laughs> someone to watch my cats. So, you know, think of all the oh, things. Oh God, that's on my list too. Like <laughs> Get it all done. Yeah. They, they need someone to feed them. So my, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, add that, add that to the list. Somebody needs to feed the boys. Add it to the list. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you again. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having yeah. me. Awesome.